This introduction video is really useful. Please watch it the whole way through, even if you think it is not relevant to you. In it, I'm gonna give you some definitions and talk through the words and the terminology used in the questions that you're gonna face. I'm also gonna give you some tips on how best to set out your work so that you can check it more easily and loads of other stuff. As always, if you wanna jump around the video to the correct location, the links are in the video description. I hope you enjoy it. Right, starting with terminology. Many of you will think this sounds pretty boring and it sounds pretty useless. I'm never asked for the definition of a certain term in my exam, so why would I learn them? Well, I have found that it's very important for students to understand what the question is asking. Crazy, I know. In order to understand what the question is asking, you need to know what the words mean. Now, Mathematicians are not as bad at naming things as people give them credit or lack of credit for. They're actually have they have actually named things by the terms that make sense. The perfect example for this is rationalizing the denominator. When I was at school, I heard rationalize the denominator and it just didn't mean anything to me. It just was a topic that I knew was in thirds and I had to go through this process and I got an answer. But think about it, the words make sense. The denominator is the bottom half of the fraction and to rationalize means to make rational. So you have to make it rational. Now, we don't all use that word in the mathematical sense every day. So it would be useful for us to understand what the word rational means in terms of numbers. And then we will always remember that rationalizing the denominator means to make the denominator of a fraction rational and rational means any number which can be expressed as a and over b where a and b are both integers. Now that last bit probably sounded a bit confusing so let me just explain that before we move on. An irrational number like root 2, root 3 or pi has a decimal component which keeps on going forever with no pattern. This is what we call an irrational number and there is no way that we can express it as one integer over another integer. Other numbers, rational numbers, either have a decimal component, which is a pattern, or they have no decimal component at all. They're, they're an integer. So that's what rational means. And in terms of thirds, it means remove thirds from the bottom line. Um, now, you can either remember it as that or remember it as make rational and know what a rational number is. But either way, understanding the terminology is useful. Right, let's get into some more. Okay, let's start with variable. You're going to be working with lots of variables. The letters that most often, often denote variables are X's and Y's. Variables change, that's why they're called variable. And they are usually uh, the input for the equation or the input for the function or the formula and that's why we allow them to change. We contrast these with constants. The constants are fixed values, whether we know them or we don't. They have an actual number that we can find, and we can say that a equals four or b equals three. Constants are usually denoted by the letters a, b, c, d, e, uh, but there will be other letters used at random to denote constants just as there will variables. You can't tell whether something's a constant or a variable simply by the letter. However, usually we use certain letters for one and certain letters for the other. Right, now, what about an expression? Now, wait, let's go for a term. A term is a collection of numbers and letters that multiply together, like 3b or 2x or y squared. Like terms are terms with the same combination of letters. So 3x and 5x both just have 1x and therefore they are like terms. But 
3x and x squared have a different combination of letters, so therefore we do not say they are like terms, and we can't add them together in their algebraic form. Now an expression. An expression is a bunch of terms added together and divided that makes sense. Now, when we say makes sense, we, it means that we follow mathematical convention and we don't do strange things like divide by zero or take the square root of a negative. As long as it just makes sense, then it's an expression. An equation is one expression equaling another expression. Right, so y equals mx plus c is an equation. Focus on the first four letters of the word equation, e, q, u, a. These are the same, fourth let same first four letters as equals e, q, u, a. An equation has an equal sign. Okay, so setting out your work correctly. Um, are there actually good reasons for this or is this just teachers and, and me being pedantic? Well, no, there are three good reasons that I can think of for setting out your work correctly. Firstly, if it's set out correctly, your marker will immediately see it and be filled with confidence in your ability. So when they're marking your paper, they will not look for any mistakes and be filled with confidence that you are an excellent mathematician. Reason two is that it will be simply easier for them to mark. They don't have to go looking around the page for the right answer. They can see clearly where it is and they don't go looking for things that might turn out to be mistakes. It might be the case that in your working you have made a mistake and self-corrected and then got the right answer. You want the marker to have such confidence in your ability, they mark your, uh, your answer correct and don't go looking around the page to find the small mistake where that you self-corrected. And the third reason, and probably the most important reason, is if you set your work out correctly and neatly, it will be easier for you to check. You want to be coming back to your answers at the end of the paper, looking at them and clearly seeing what your thought process was when you attempted the question for the first time. By checking, you will then be able to get rid of any small mistakes that you might have made and you will definitely get a better mark. So what ways should we set out our work and what things should we not be doing which uh, make the work look unprofessional? Well, first and foremost, there's one thing you need to stop using and that is the division sign. Instead of using the division sign, use the fraction sign. I'm not saying never use the division sign. Sometimes there are cases when maybe one fraction is dividing by another where it gets messy to use too many fraction signs and you might want to use the division sign but for the most part leave the division sign out and use the fraction sign. The second thing you want to do is to use less multiplication signs. You're still going to use multiplication signs but as much as possible if two letters or a number a letter are multiplying together simply write them beside each other like 3x instead of 3 times x. That x and that multiplication sign can start to look quite similar if you're rushing. Okay, so the third way. Now this is more a question of style rather than doing certain things or not doing certain things. You're going to either be given an equation or an expression for many of the problems that you face in your exam. An equation is going to have an equal sign in it as I have described earlier in the video. And the expression is not going to have an equal sign in it. If they ask you to solve an equation that's one thing equal to another and you need to find a part of it, say x, you need to manipulate this equation through a series of steps until you get your answer. Therefore, there's going to be an equation with a manipulated equation beneath and beneath and beneath and beneath until you get to your answer. Therefore, the best way to set this out is in a sort of V formation with the equal signs in a straight line coming down the middle. You start off with your equation at the top and you manipulate it through a series of steps until it's simplified into your answer, such as x equals 3 or 4 or y equals this or a equals that. Okay, so that's the equation, but what about an expression? You might be given an expression and told to simplify this expression, say simplifying a third or expanding some brackets. 
Well then you need to add the equal sign afterwards because you need to say what you've simplified it into. In this case, it's best to start with your expression in the top left hand corner and write an equal sign afterwards and then go through a series of steps on the right hand side where the expression is being simplified down to its most simple form. This you could sort of call the panhandle or the plough, a bit like the, the, the star formation. <laughs> it's got a, the question, the starting expression at the top, the straight line of equal signs coming down the middle, and then the, the other side forms a slice down to your answer at the bottom, the expression in its simplest form. If you do these four things, you get rid of your division signs, you use less multiplication signs, you show your equations in this V formation and you, sh and you simplify your expressions in this panhandle structure, these four things will give your marker confidence in your ability and hopefully allow you to get a better mark.